brother. Amen. I do appreciate uh, the opportunity to come and minister. And so, uh, greetings from down under, where we say g'day, mate. And so, hopefully, you can understand my accent. I know I'm Vietnamese. You're looking at these Asian guys speaking Australian. So we're going to have a good time this morning. Uh, your pastor is one of my favorites, and I uh, do appreciate uh, this church and uh, the privilege to be here and, and minister. Last night, we had a, a great time and uh, sharing my testimony. I did invite and, um, people to call people to come out and invite them. And if you're here this morning, you're a visitor, listen, you're the most important person in this room. And uh, we do appreciate you coming, and I'm believing God that God can speak to you this morning because that's what we're about. How many of you here this morning uh, are grateful you're not in jail this morning? <laughs> Pastor Cluck said that in my first conference, and I'm thinking, I can connect with that. I like this church. <laughs> and so uh, here we are. I'm believing God for a good time. Let's turn to the Word of God this morning, 1 Kings 3, and we're going to go into verse 16 in just a moment. But a hospital in India made a shocking mistake in handing over a dead child to the wrong mother. Two babies were actually born underway in the Magallan Hospital there in India. But the dead baby was handed to the wrong parents wrapped in a towel. And without looking at the baby, they accepted the loss and buried the baby. Two days later, the other baby started to make progress, was starting to get better. And so the hospital called their parents of the recovering girl, and which the mother responded, it's actually... It's a boy. At that which point, the hospital realized their mistake. They called the other mother, telling them that the child was actually still alive. And despite this mix-up, no charges was laid because the family was actually wasn't financial uh, in a good position to do so. I say that to say, how many know that life can be like a roller coaster ride? That emotionally there are challenges and Trauma that takes part, ups and downs and unexpected twists and turns. But uh, this makes it all worthwhile if you've been uh, saved or living for some quite time for God. This makes it all wild because of love. That's love for your spouse, perhaps love for your children, perhaps uh, love for your parents. In all that we do, we do in love. And I often say to our church that we are real people with real problems that serve a real God. Can you say amen? I think about love. Pain exists because we love. And because we love, we care, right? And because we care, when we help people, we often get hurt. That we get betrayed. Often sometimes we experience death, which is coming to all of us. If you weren't there last night... Um, I today have 16 friends that are dead. I was involved with gangs and drugs. Uh, that's all gang related. That's not included my grandma or either murdered or uh, drug overdosed or committed suicide. But one thing that I've learned in the last 18 years of salvation is how to love people. And I want to minister into this space out of our text here. But this story we're about to read is Solomon's display of wisdom judging a matter. However, I want to focus in on the action of these actually two mothers. That brings insight to the message I want to minister this morning. Let's read out of our text. I want to preach on a sermon entitled Love Hurts. Let's read out of our text. 1 Kings chapter 3, starting verse 16. Now two women were... Harlots came to the king and stood before him. And one said, woman said, Oh my Lord, this woman and I dwell in the same house. And I gave birth while she was in the house. And it happened the third day after I had given birth that this woman also gave birth. And we together, no one was with us in the house except the two of us in the house. And this woman's sons died in the night because she laid on him. So she arose in the middle of the night and took my son from my side while the, your maidservant slept and laid him in her bosom and laid the dead child in my bosom. And when I rose in the morning to nurse my son, there he was dead. 
But when I examined him in the morning, indeed, he was not my son who I had born. Then the other woman said, no, but the living one is my son and the dead one is your son. And the first woman said, no, but the dead one is your son and the living one is my son. Thus they spoke before the king and the king said, the one says that this my son who lives and your son is the one is dead. And the other one says, no, but your son is the dead one and my son is the living one. Then the king said, bring me a sword. So they brought a sword before the king and the king said, divide the child in two and give one half to the one and the half to the other. Then the woman whose son was living spoke to the king, for she yearned with compassion for her son. And she said, O my Lord, give her the living child, and by no means kill him. But the other, uh, the other said, Let him be neither mine nor yours, but divide him. So the king answered and said, Give the first woman the living child, and by no means kill him. She is his mother. Amen. Love hurts. I want to consider three things uh, this morning. And number one, let's begin to look at uh, the tragedy of life. You know, the fact of life is that death and tragedy comes to us all. No one escapes this. We all going to have to face uh, some level of tragedy in our lives. And research says that 50% uh, will experience, of people will experience trauma in their life. Um, and although the majority of people actually absorb the trauma and uh, get over it in time, many survivors actually experience long-lasting problems. I mean, you know, the fact of life, it's not like a video game. You can't just press reset, right? This is real heartache, real pain, real sorrow that we experience because death is final and it cannot be reversed. The Bible says that man is appointed to die once uh, and then comes the judgment. And anyone here this morning has experienced death uh, of a loved one understands the pain uh, and the reality that comes from it. You cannot escape the emotional damage, the mental carnage uh, many times that trauma can bring. I mentioned last night uh, that I went through the deaths of my friends. And listen, there are things that I've seen that I wish I, I could reverse. But listen, uh, that, that, that wasn't the case. I had to work through some issues uh, and some problems. Beyond Blue, uh, Blue's uh, uh, mental health sort of website, it describes trauma as it affects your mental and your physical well-being. Uh, it begin, begins to create fear and sadness and guilt, uh, feelings of anger and grief. And he says, when you're in this space, uh, people struggle to think clearly and inevitably act uh, differently. I mentioned a story about uh, my sister uh, being on drugs. And there she is. Uh, she's had, uh, you know, uh, three kids taken away from the government. Uh, but she was on drugs. And while being on drugs, uh, she's pregnant. And so, you know, she's shooting heroin in her veins uh, while being pregnant, and so I get a call, there she is in the hospital, she's had the baby, and I've gone in there, uh, and I realize here, I walk past her, she's there, the baby's there in the cot, uh, black and blue, and uh, you know, um, I remember this time there, my sister uh, and her partner at the time would begin to think about, you know, the coffin, and uh, talking, talking about the, the costs of all these things going on. Listen, my sister today has still haven't recovered. She's still roaming the streets today uh, on drugs, actually in a wheelchair, roaming the streets with no direction, no life, uh, that living here depressed, uh, down, and forgotten. But this is the tragedy in life with people with unresolved issues. They haven't processed life correctly, right? Whether that be a dead child or some, some other trauma or, you know, molestation or coming back from the war. Listen, there are traumas uh, that are real pain, uh, real sorrow that actually exist in people's lives. Post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, here depression, anxiety impacts. Listen, not only that person, but people around them. I've worked with uh, many men and uh, kind of unusual how I many, you know, we, we work with people uh, and people uh, are weird. <laughs> people are different. But we work through issues, you know. One guy here, he's uh, because of one car accident and he's now in his 40s still living with his mum. He's so afraid to go get his license uh, to drive. 
Because here he's allowed this to affect him in this way. Not only affects him, but those that are around him. Whether that be an acute or complex or, or cr- chronic trauma, listen, it not only affects the individual, but people around them. And the truth is that no one is exempt from the pains uh, of life. And I mean, all that emotions uh, and trauma and pain can run deep. It can leave deep scars uh, within us. We look in the Bible, we understand uh, the first uh, here trauma uh, and uh, tragedy unfold in Genesis 4 where amongst two brothers when they're fighting out of rejection and jealousy. We know that Cain killed Abel creating the first broken home in history. And here today, still people obviously suffer. Proverbs 13, 30. A peaceful heart leads to a healthy body, but jealousy is like cancer in the bones. In our text, we see this play out, not between two brothers, but among two mothers. The story here, it talks about a baby that has passed away and rather accept the tragedy this woman begins to shift the pain. She switches the baby. And when this shows us and reveals us the selfishness that sin produces in one's life. I mean, no, sin seeks to destroy. But love this morning seeks to restore. But I want you to begin to think about how this plays out uh, with this first woman and how sin plays out in people's lives. Number one, uh, here sin is set out to deceive. In our text, verse 20 says this, So she rose in the middle of the night and took my son from my side while your mate servant was slept and laid him in her bosom and laid the dead child on my bosom. Listen, this woman swapped the babies, listen, not in the day, but in the cover of night. But this is where sin happens. This is, sin likes to operate in the cover of darkness. Let me take, talk to young people. I mean, no, nothing good happens after 12 o'clock. <laughs> Right? That's the devil's hour, man. Between 12 and 3, listen, uh, creepy things happen. I have a, you know, a, a mental uh, alarm in my mind, and sometimes I work up until 12, and when the 12 bell goes, I'm like, hey, go to bed. Because right? there's danger after 12. But sin begins to appear attractive. Listen, it is a silent killer and a destroyer of your soul. It is a liar. Amen. That what looks attractive, listen, it's like a hook in the end. Uh, It will rob you. It will steal everything that is good from you. But this is what the devil does. He's a liar. So is his boyfriend, right? Oh, can I say that? In this woke generation? So I'm really politically incorrect. My wife, uh, she bites the teeth when I preach. (laughs) Please don't say anything stupid. Amen. I heard you laugh so I can, have, I can be myself, yeah. <laughs> See, his speciality is to deceive. We know, you know, he made the fruit here in, in the eyes of Eve. That it looked good. She was deceived in it. We've heard it said before, sin will take you further than you want to go, right? Keep you longer than you want to stay and cost you more than you want to pay. But this is what it does. It begins to deceive, right? Secondly, sin argues the facts, not only deceives, but he argues the point. I worked with one new convert, and listen, I've, I've had numbers of homeless people live in my house, and I know, again, my wife is like, you're crazy, uh, but listen, I mean, no, that's, that's what's what we do. Some of us. <laughs> but here is a guy, he, listen, he was a pastor's ca- uh, kid, and uh, you know, he was messed up with uh, alcohol and everything else, uh, but listen, he was just a chronic liar. He would lie and he'll continue to lie. And when he'll get caught out, he'll lie again. How many of you know uh, that you work with people like that? That they constantly lie. They lie so much uh, that they believe it themselves. They lie to cover up lies. And it becomes some intricate lie here. And they get caught in the web of sin. They take it to the lens uh, and to the limits disregarding of the shame and that it would bring if they get caught out because they want to go all the way. See, this is the guilty mother. Right, she did the swap. Uh, she knew in her mind that, you know, that, that, uh, that, that she did wrong, but yet here still she took it all the way to the courts of Solomon, right? But that's what sin does. Sin lies, 
It deceives. And this is the cause of many tragedies in life. You know, I remember walking into that hospital when I phone, got the phone call. I, I was looking forward to come and see my niece or my, my nephew. So I walk past and see my sister curled up uh, in a fetal position looking at the wall. And I go over and I pick up this baby, right, black and blue, and I walk to the window. And I remember I was only about maybe 17 years old. And I looked out the window, the dead baby in my arms, and I just basically said uh, to God, why? At these questions, God, why? What did this baby deserve, right? Right, to, to, to not even have a chance. But many times, this is people's questions in life. Why? Why do I have to go through this? Why did this happen to me? Why is this going on in my life? Listen, a simple answer is because of sin. Sin, thirdly, is self-destructive. That's what it does. See, at this point of judgment, Solomon called for a sword. And here we, we see here in his wisdom, right? he brings to surface the selfishness of sin and exposes this. But what did the woman say? See, what sin does, it, sin doesn't care about anyone about, around them. Sin just it wants to destroy, right? The, the mother's like, just kill this baby, right? Because that's what sin does. If I can't have it, no one's going to have it, right? These are the actions of our sinful nature. That if they can't be, if I can't be happy, they can't be happy. If I suffer, everyone else has to suffer. That's what sin does. So let's secondly consider here tough decisions in life. You know, I was once thinking about this and these questions that, uh, you know, often plague your mind. You begin to think, you know, when people ask you sort of questions like this, if you were on a boat, right, your mom and dad went overboard, which one, and you can, you can only save one, <laughs> which one would you save? Some of you, it's clear, right? <laughs> what about if it was your spouse and your children. And you can only save one. It's a difficult question, isn't it? You know, maybe it's your, between your three, four kids, five, six thousand kids. <laughs> you can only save one. <laughs> 2012, Mitch Winehouse established the Amy Winehouse Foundation in honor of his daughter who actually overdosed. And in an interview, he mentioned these words uh, that really caught my attention. He says, I wish it would have been me. See, this is a common thought amongst people that have lost a loved one. My life in exchange of their life. Right? Some have been in situations that you wish you could have done more. I wish I could have said more or done this or done that. They call survivor's guilt is where people feel guilty to a point they think in their mind, I could have done more, but I didn't. And they come to a place and say, you know, I wish I can exchange my place for theirs. How many know that love this morning compels us to sacrifice? This is the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, right? We know in the Garden of Gethsemane, that here he is coming to the end of his, himself and his humanity. That in the Garden of Gethsemane, which, uh, which means a place of pressure, that's where they, they crush olive, olives and produce oil. But here it gives us a picture yet again. Here he's in, he's in a place of pressure. And we know that he bled to a point that blood was coming out of his pores. And he said to God, uh, if this cup will, could pass from me, please. But nevertheless, your will be done, not mine. That was a tough decision. Let me know here, he laid down his own life for your sake and my sake, that we can be free right in our right minds uh, with our marriages restored, uh, off drugs uh, and, uh, and together. See, Luke 23, 34, and Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they divided his garments and cast lots. See, the fact is that we don't understand See, sometimes we don't understand, and I don't know if we ever understand uh, the love of God. Because how many know sometimes our idea of love, I mean, it's more than just a, a feeling. The fact is that love hurts. There is a sorrow that comes along with it. 
It hurts to give yourself to an ungrateful humanity. Yet, Jesus did it for you and me. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. This is a tough decision. Painful experience for our Lord. I don't know if we'll ever comprehend the height and depth of His love. See, I mean, our love is just more than a buzzword, a, a fuzzy feeling. <laughs> you know, I, I, I worked in a um, couple of high schools uh, as a chaplain for seven years, uh, and, uh, and a majority I'll counsel these young kids, you know. And uh, the funny thing is, is I begin to see a trend. A majority of the issues they have <laughs> is relationship issues. <laughs> oh, but I love him. He's my destiny. Listen, he stinks. He got no job. Right? He doesn't brush his teeth. Oh, but I love him. <laughs> Listen, love is just more than just a feeling. It is action. It is sacrifice. Listen, love hurts. I'm not sure if you're ready for that. Because it hurts in marriage. Love hurts with children. And love hurts, especially in ministry. In doing what we do to love and care for those that are broken. See, we have a saying, come as you are, but don't leave as you came. Because God can fix you. God can help you. I don't care how jacked up you are, how messed up or what color you are. You can be red, pink, and white, white polka dots, man. We don't care. First John 4.10 this is love, not that we love God, but He loved us and sent His Son as a Tony sacrifice for our sins. I mean, in our text here, we see now focus in on the innocent woman. This mother gave up her right. She said, no, 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 let the baby live. Give it to her. Why did she do that? Listen, she, she did that for the sake of her, for her son to live, right? Because love says, it's not about me, it is about you. In verse 26, then the woman whose son was living spoke to the king, for she yearned with compassion for her son. And she said, oh my Lord, give the living child, and by no means kill him. You know, this is the heart of God. See, God's heart is to sacrifice his very life, his very son um, for your sake and my sake. This is the heart of a father. This is the heart of a mother. This is, ought to be a heart of a brother and a sister, uncle, auntie. Listen, if you're here this morning and you don't have family, I thank God for this church because we're more than a church, we're family. And I thank God that we can go anywhere in the world, we can have the same spirit, and we can feel like I've known you for years. Doesn't matter what color you are. Doesn't matter your accent. We're accepted in the beloved. But this is the love of what we have as a fellowship, as with one with another. When people walk in and they feel that spirit, they understand that this love goes beyond their understanding of love. There is something powerful that is there because what is love is love is God. See, our love for each other, nothing compared to the love that God has for you and I. You know, there was a season. You know, one thing about the, um, the Vietnamese culture is that we, we uh, esteem family very highly. And when I got saved, I'm one of 10 kids. Like I said last night, we need a postcode for my family. We're so big, you know. Some like Mexicans here. I said, I feel this, man. I feel like I'm a home here. And I remember here getting saved and having the revelation that I'm going to heaven and everyone that, that doesn't know God is going to hell. Listen, that didn't sit well with me. That's why I began to witness to everything that I've seen Everything that moved, I'll witness to it. If it didn't move, I'll kick it. <laughs> but I'll come home at night. This is beyond just everyday witnessing. I'll come home. Listen, there was another deeper anguish that I had, not for strangers, but for my family. And I'll sit there with my photos of my deceased friends and my family. 
and I'll begin there to weep before God. And I'll say, God, uh, save my family. And I'll weep and I'll pray. And I'll ask God, uh, please save my family. If you weren't there yesterday, my family was torn apart by gangs, uh, by drugs, uh, by alcohol. And all I wanted was God to uh, restore my family. I'll do that. And for a while, a couple of days, weeks went by. And God gave me a revelation and God spoke in the sense uh, with not an audible wo voice, uh, but God spoke to me. He says, hey, listen, I love them more than you love them. So in this sense, it's saying, hey, trust me for them. The moment I did, listen, I, the moment I stopped playing the Holy Ghost, <laughs> God saved my family. 1.13 family members in church. You know what manner of love that God has for you and I. See, I was speaking to some pastors at a conference when this song came out, Reckless Love. You know, you, you may know that song. But when we, the conversation was on the topic of words, because we, we want to understand what these words mean, right? Because reckless has a bit of negative connotation to it. So how can God be reckless, right? Because the opposite of reckless is, is actually considerate. So I did some research and I began to think and, and, uh, and I read up about here, Osbury explained, he's the, he's the songwriter, and he explains the meaning. He says, and he quotes this. He says, when I use the phrase, the reckless love of God, I'm not, only, I'm not saying that God himself is reckless. I am, however, saying that the way he loves is in many regards quite so. That his love bankrupt heaven for you. That God sold all out. He went all out for you and me. Yes, with all the issues and problems and all the things and drama that you had in life, he left and bankrupt heaven to come to earth for you. I thank God for that because sometimes we think, you know what, I just gotta fix myself up, then I'll come to Christ. Listen, if you wait until then, you don't need him. <laughs> Why do you need God when you fix yourself up? Come jacked up, God fix you up. He made you, he can fix you. This is a powerful dimension. Many of us will not understand the decisions in life. Listen, that God comes to earth, he begins to work within our hearts, he begins to restore our minds, our relationship with our parents, our spouses. God does this. Listen, if you're here, you got uh, issues with your parents or with your spouse or with your children, we serve a God that is able to restore. I interviewed uh, one of our Islander girls. We have a lot of a big Polynesian contingent in our church and one of these uh, girls, a powerful testimony. I weep every time that I watch it, uh, but we put it together and the backdrop song is Reckless Love. But this is a story not of a mother losing a child, but rather a child losing a mother. She lost her mother. And she shares this story. She's a blessing in the church today. But I want to read you some lyrics to that song of reckless love. It goes, before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You've been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You've been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, how he chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I could not earn it. I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Bow your head, close your eyes, right? So let's close this morning with the testimony of love. September 2018, just gone, you know, uh, in before the lockdowns and everything else. Branko Hawang, he's not a relative of mine, but made the use. Made the headings there in the news article, part, um, articles in our town that here his life was actually turned upside down when his wife and unborn twins, Roman and Archer, were killed in a head-on collision by a drunkard driver. 
It only went to court this year. And he said in his statement, he says today, and he's speaking here to the defendant, he's saying, I question who is being punished. While you sit behind bars, the rest of my family and I are in the same boat. The result of your actions made a horror movie seem like child's play. You decided to be the judge, the jury, and the executioner. You decided to play God. And the end result, you had to take people's happiness, hope, and future away. But I read the article, and despite all this pain, sorrow, and trauma, Bronco says, you know what, to the drunk driver, I forgive you. And he says, when this is all done, I want to know your story. How many know to this morning that every single person here has a story? 1 Peter 4, 8, above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. In our text here, in our story, we can easily overlook this mother and, you know, be in awe of Solomon's wisdom. But the testimony of this woman here reflects uh, the love of God. And we know as we look through the biblical lens here of Abraham willing to sacrifice his son, something in our minds is inconceivable. That you would sacrifice your own child for people that don't love you. Oh, sorry. You know what I mean. <laughs> the fact here is that there's a struggle. It's faith testimony today as our father of our faith. Listen, this is true love and a and an example of true dedication to God. The sacrificial love of God. Romans 5.10 speaks about while we were his enemies, Christ died for us. And this woman isn't just here a reflection of God's love, but how God calls you and I this morning to love our enemies, to love those who despitefully use us. Because as disciples of Christ Jesus, how many know we are called to uphold the golden rule? Love God and love people. I thank God for the potter's house. I thank God for the Fairfield potter's house. They loved me and nurtured me. I, they, I, the day I got saved, listen, I came in a drug addict, broken, no hope, no future, messed up. But they took me in. A couple nurtured me. Listen, opened their house to me. It comes out after the other couple saying, are you serious, you sure? You want to do this? <laughs> but they did. They allowed me to sleep on their son's bed. They printed out scriptures for me and put it on the wall and began to pray for me. Church was about 25, 30 people. Listen, God uh, began to help me as I, became to, uh, as I began to uh, plant myself in the church. That I began to knit hearts with the brothers in the church, listen, God did a, a, a wonderful work in my heart uh, and I couldn't say I could have done it without the church. The amazing thing today, I pastor the very church that cares for me, that cared for me. See? <laughs> See, our churches worldwide are a testimony of God's love in action. See, people who are willing to sacrifice, who are selfless in their service to God, willing to work with the brokenhearted and those uh, that uh, the church world put into the too hard basket. I often get calls, hey, from other churches and other ministers. Say, hey, could you, we don't know what to do with these guys. Could we send them down to you? I'm like, send them on down. <laughs> i got a photo I want to show in closing. Here's a picture of the half of them, uh, uh, in, you know, are the men from the rehab that had been saved. This is just, I uh, asked them to send a photo while I was away. This was uh, Sunday night. See, we, we're traveling back in time. And so here, <laughs> one of our baby churches, uh, he, he preached uh, in, the, in the church that I pioneered. And I want to close with this story about the vision. What they're holding is a plaque that describes the vision. That is to build a community of contagious Christians that would have impact in this city and reach beyond by planting and supporting churches in Australia and throughout the world. 
But the backstory of this uh, um, vision plaque was that it was in our older building and the church actually burnt down. Right? I wasn't even saved yet, uh, but they saved the, this vision, moved into the next building. They did a work at B and was going to throw everything out, including that vision. I said, no, no, I'm going to take that. I took that as a disciple. I kept that for eight years as a disciple. And I went to Pioneer, the church in Liverpool. And there it is. Uh, we labored. Uh, people got saved. We got our own building, off support and everything else. Uh, and uh, there, as soon as we got the building, I hung it up uh, and I stuck it to the wall. Years later on, years after eight, uh, nearly 10 years after, here uh, just Sunday, uh, the, the, the pastor brought it back <laughs> and he preached on vision. That was just this Sunday, yesterday. And I asked for a photo. Listen, every single person in this photo, and I would dare to say you here today can have a testimony of love. But listen, word of warning, it's going to hurt. But if you would reach out and if you would open your house, if you would love people, which I know you do, I'm, not, I'm preaching the converted. There are things that God begins to allow us the privilege to be a part of. Listen, God here in closing, God will give you lasting impact and influence and good reputation. You lay down your life and you live your life for other people. God will give you influence. God will give you Tonight, listen, what you are willing to let go. So if you're willing to let it go, God says, I know I, know I come first. Not in my notes, but I'll share it. When I got saved, uh, me and my wife, uh, we, uh, we were dating at the time. And so um, she's like, oh, her eyes are beginning to roll, you know. When we were dating, we know we were doing wrong. So, you know, uh, I was challenged to get things right, break, her, break, break up with her. And so, you know what I said? Uh, you know what? I said to God, save her or get her out of my life. And I, but I prayed and fasted for her for six months. Uh, every Saturday, uh, I would pray and fast and I'll say, God, save her. But I believe, yeah, obviously she gets saved and the rest is history. But I say this, uh, it's because when God knew that I was willing to let her go, he gave her to me. I don't know, that's, that's for someone here this morning. But maybe you're here, lastly, you allow God to, and live for God and allow the love of God to just flood you and allow it overflow in your life. God, here are some things that you know, the things that have gone wrong in life and some wrongs that have, you thought they'll never become right. Listen, God will vindicate you in the right time. In our story here, this is exactly what happened. And listen, God uh, will vindicate you. First Corinthians, I close with this, 13.4. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily, easily angered. It keeps no account of wrongs. I want to say that again. It keeps no account of wrongs. Love takes no pleasure in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Amen. Let's bow our heads this morning. Glory to God. Amen. I do appreciate you here. If you're a visitor, like I said, you're the most important person in this building. You know, you're here, maybe perhaps uh, someone's invited you. And, uh, you know, you've been to church before. You know your views on God or on church. But listen, if I can ask you, put that all aside. And I'm not asking you to listen to a man, but rather listen to the Spirit of God that is in this building this morning. See, God's here. We exist as a church, the only organization that exists for its non-members. We are in here because of them that are out there. But listen, you're here this morning, and you know you're not right with God. You know you're dealing with issues and problems that you know you can't fix. They're a perplexity to you. Right? You know you're, you can't control them. Listen, God sees, He knows exactly to the details and the finer, intricate things that are going on, more than you could possibly know. He understands the mechanics of all that has happened. 
And this morning, he's in this place uh, and he's calling for you. Would you come to him this morning? I'm not asking you whether you believe in God. I'm not asking you whether you go to church. Listen, I went to church for 21 years and I was going straight to hell. I had no relationship with God. That was until I was born again. And my spirit was made alive that I can get to know God. And This morning, this is what you need. You need Jesus. You need a relationship with him. You know of him, but listen, you don't know, we know him. We all know who Joe Biden is. But how many of you this morning have a personal relationship with him? I would dare say none. Listen, God doesn't want religion this morning. He wants a relationship with you. But there's one thing that stands in the way, and that is sin this morning. Are you willing to let it go? Not to be perfect, but to let it go. Allow God to help you. Allow him to heal you. Allow him into your heart, into your life, your situations. Listen, it's going to take some time. You spent 30, 40, 50 years messing up your life. It's not going to happen straight away. But it's got to start somewhere. Let it be this morning. You're here. You want to give your life to Jesus. Come back and repent of your sins. While every head is bowed, no one looking around, that's you. Would you lift up your hand? Pastor, I want to, I want to accept the uh, forgiveness of my sins this morning. That's you. Lift up your hand all over this place. You're here. It is a challenge to your soul. Listen, don't let this moment pass, my friend. Don't let pride keep you from coming to Jesus. He cares for you. He loves you. He knows your doubts. He knows your fears. The things that have happened in the past which you try to bury. Listen, God sees all that. And He wants to heal you. He wants to help you. Lift up your hand. Pastor Wang, would you pray for me? That's you this morning. Lift up your hand. Come to Jesus. Allow Him to work at your heart. Allow His love to come in and, and flood you. Listen, you won't regret it, my friend. You won't regret experiencing His love and forgiveness. You can have a brand new start this morning. You don't have to walk out of this place the same way you walked in. It's true, you can change. But He calls for a decision. Would you make that decision this morning? Lift up your hand. Pastor Wang, here I am. I don't know if God can forgive me, but if He can, I want that. And I'm drawing a line in the sand this morning, and I'm coming to Him. Here's my hand. Would you pray with me? That's you. Lift up your hand. Glory be to God. Perhaps you're backslidden this morning. See, backslider, you know, you know the lingo, you know the deal. It's on repeat, but let this time be different. Allow him to come into your heart. He loves you. He cares for you. Listen, some things have happened. Yes, uh, some things are, are unjust. And God sees. He knows. Uh, and the time will come that God will sort things out and he'll make all things new. But until that time, you have to trust in his love for you. You have to trust that he knows best. Allow him to move and work at your heart. Backslide, unsaved. Lift up your hand, Pastor. I've wrestled, I've struggled, but today's the day. I'm giving him my life. That's you. Lift up your hand. Glory be to God. One last time in this place. Before we move on to other things, my friend, we're not promised tomorrow. The way things are going in the world, well, it is not promised us. We cannot play the I get around it game. I'll do it tonight, I'll do it when I'm ready. Listen, if that's your mentality, you're never going to be ready. There's always things that come up, always responsibilities, always things that you're calling out for your attention rather than God's. But it calls for us to make a decision. See, if your spouse and your children or your loved ones too fall into the sea, you had a decision to save one. You will at least save one. Not let them both die, right? You have to make a decision. Would you make it this morning? One last time, God's dealing with you. Come to Jesus. Lift up your hand. That's you. God sees that hand. God bless you. God bless you. Honest heart. Is there anyone else? Honest heart. God's breaking through this morning to the heart. Allow Him. Open it up. Let Him come in. Listen, you're here. 
Someone's brought you. Someone's praying for you. The reason why they pray for you and always keep them pestering you to come to church is because they love you. They don't know how else to say it, but I'm going to say it for them. They love you this morning and it hurts them that you will not respond to God. The very person, the reason why God gave us breath, uh, that here, that you're not respond, it hurts them. They won't show you, they won't tell you, but listen, that is what's going on in their heart. They're aching for you to get saved. They're aching for you to make the decision. Would you make that decision this morning? God's speaking to some people. Your heart is pounding. That is God speaking to you. Come to Jesus. One last time, lift up your hand. That's you. Glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. You lift up your hand. I want you to look at me. Sister, look at me. You mean that? Amen. I want you to slip out of your chair. Come, come, come. We're going to pray for you tonight. Come on, slip, come. We're going to need a sister to come and to pray for her with our sister here this morning. Glory to God. Amen. Church, this morning, I'm going to open up the altars. Let's all stand this morning. The altars are open. Once you come, come lay a hold of God this morning. Let's pray. Let's believe God and pray this morning. Father, I thank you. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your word. I thank you for the challenge of Scripture that you are able to change our hearts. You're able to enlarge in our hearts. Father, I thank you this morning. Minister at these altars. You can pray in your chair, no problem. But let's lift up uh, our needs before God this morning. Father, we thank you. God, I'm asking God for your will to be done. Minister, God, in this place. Oh, thank you, Lord God. I will never let you go. God, do surgery on our hearts. God, that you would help us love like you love. God, have compassion for those, God, that have been written off in the world. She called up a condo robosa. Minister God of these altars, help us. Shanda robo kutandai. Father, we pray we bring you. God our loved ones before you. God, we agree with you. God, that you desire them to be saved and us. God, I ask you, break through the barriers. Let's stand in the way, Lord. Of culture, of tradition, of pride, of religion. We break them in the name of Jesus. We tear down the strongholds, God, that stop them from getting saved, God. We bring that before you. Jesus. Father, we ask God, your will, God, be done, God. Your kingdom come. Let us, God, your will be done. Your spirit move, God, in the hearts of your people. Let us, Lord God, Father, be your hands and feet, God, in this generation. Set my feet upon a rock now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to pray for some people this morning. And uh, this morning, let's all stand in the building this morning. So I want to pray for two things here this morning. I'm going to do one prayer, but I'm going to make two calls. One is that you've been hurt by a loved one. And you've, today you find it hard to forgive. Listen, it's always been there. It's just like something you can't let go. I want you to, I want you to come. I want to pray for you this morning. God wants to deliver you. God wants to help you this morning. Amen. The other is that um, uh, here you've, have, you've had trouble with your children. Whether that be uh, they've taken from you your issues and, and dilemmas that are going on. Or maybe some, uh, uh, you know, abortions that have happened, uh, things that, have, that, that, that are still remaining there as deep scars within you. God wants to, God wants to help you this morning. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, amen. I want you to bow your head this morning, and, and I'm making it clear. If that's not you, take one step back. We're, we're going to pray. Church, I want you to stretch out your hand. Let's begin to pray. But uh, I want to lead you in a prayer, and we're going to ask God to help. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want you to say with me, Lord Jesus, I thank you for your love, your grace and forgiveness. This morning, I surrender myself to you, my mind and my heart. You see and you know all things, the scars, the hurt and pain, the tragedy of my life. I lay before you. I ask for your grace. Cover me in your love. Help me to forgive 
This morning, I release those who have hurt me. I release them into your judgment. And I ask you that you will forgive me. And I would walk in your freedom that your blood gives me. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, let's pray. Father, we ask God, God, for your hand and grace. Minister, I pray, Father, your will be done, God. Have your way. Shikando Drobo Sunday. God, freedom right now, God, in their mind, God, and in their heart, God. God, bring, Father, healing to the scars, God, that run deep in Jesus' name. Shikando Drobo Sunday. Father, I pray, bring healing, God, in Jesus' name. Father, loose your God, your love and God forgiveness, God, I pray. God, I pray, minister this morning. I break right now the spirit of hate and rejection in Jesus' name. I pray birth, God, a love and desire, God, of your will, God, your word in their heart. Father, minister right now in Jesus' name. God, heal the broken heart. God, restore the spirit and soul this morning in Jesus' name. Let's give God praise this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Sister, I just want to say to you that God has a wonderful plan that you don't understand. All right? And so sometimes it's like mountains. When you're in a mountain, you don't see what's on the other side. Right? And sometimes you go through the valley, it's like, you know what, I don't know what, you know, it's, it's tough, it's hard, I don't know what's going on. But listen, as you grow, you're going to understand there are not just one mountain, but there's a few mountains down the road. All right? And God would help you to see correctly, to make the right decisions that are before you, if you allow God to do that. Right? In your heart, and your life, in your relationship with Him. Okay? Uh, there's some things down the track, but your decisions now really do matter. Okay, and if you make the right choices and decisions, God's got a beautiful plan for your life. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning for my sister. God, help her, God. God, I pray, help her with the decisions that are before her. God, in days and weeks and months to come, help her, guide her in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. God wants to say he's forgiven you, okay? And that uh, he's, he's, he's healing your heart. He's, uh, he's, he's restoring things. That, that uh, It's very broken, right? But listen, sometimes God just going to take some time to put some stuff together, all right? And that, that may take a, a, a while. But listen, don't give up, right? Never give up, okay? And, and, and know and trust God. Everything that God gives is good, right? And so we have to accept the, the, the good, the bad, and ugly, all right? Along with, the, along with the joy that God gives, okay? And so in the deep times of heartache and pain, just know that there are, in the, there are mountaintops, right, that God has for you. And uh, in, in those times, just know that, God, you are with me, right? You're not, he's not the light at the end of the tunnel. He's with you in the tunnel, okay? You walk with God in that, right? And God's going to help you. Father, I pray, God, your hand and grace upon our system. God, minister God into her heart and her life. God, I thank you for all that you've done, all you're going to do in her life. I pray, strengthen her. God, this morning, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yes. Um, scripture. You need strength. Yeah. Um, so Joseph told him my son's funeral is this week. Yeah, your son's funeral this week. Yeah, okay. We're going to believe God to give you the strength you need. Listen, it's in these dark times that I want to encourage you. We need to pray that God give you the strength to be the light in that darkness. Many family and friends are going to come. And their hearts are going to be prepared for the gospel. And I want to encourage you that you stand, that you minister God's love in that place. Let's pray, church, for her strength, that God will be with her in the planning and the, and the overall uh, ceremony. Father, I pray, God, your hand and grace upon my sister. God, that you would give her, Father, words to speak. God, that you would strengthen her heart. God, her spirit, God, I pray. God, your strength and, and encouragement, Father. I pray, God, open the hearts of those that are there. God, minister in and through your loved one, God. I pray your hand and grace, God, in her. Strengthen her. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Father, thank you. Thank you. Amen. God's going to help you. 
okay? He's going to help you. And, uh, you know, the, the, this is right down your lane. Yes. Okay, but yes. you've got to know that he, God's he's giving. The benefit. Yes, yes. Amen. Listen, God's going to give you more sons here in this church. Okay? Yes, yes. Right? Yes. And know that here, that, that, that he's in heaven. Yes. Yeah, amen, amen. Yes. And so, amen. Be blessed and, yes. and uh, be a light into that place. I, I've, I've been at many funerals. Uh, saved ones and sinner ones. Saved ones are better. <laughs> All right? Yes. Okay. Amen. Glory to God. All right. Thank you for letting me pray. All right, bro. I just want to tell you, man, God's got a, God's got a future, man. All right? And so sometimes things work slowly, right? Not as fast as we want it. All right? But that doesn't mean you, you don't push for it. All right? Just keep on pushing. All right? You keep on pushing. God, I want more. I want more. All right? And say, so God's going to give you. He says, if you, those who lack wisdom, He's going to give. All right? And, you get, and He'll give you the Holy Ghost. All right? That, that, that would help you and reveal truth to you. All right, and it's going to help you, bro. All right, let me pray. Father, I thank you for my brother. God, bless him and help him. Father, give him wisdom and understanding. God, spark a fire within his heart, God, to pursue, Father, all that you have. God, in every arena, God, I pray. God, let your word, Father, burn God in his heart. God, I pray, make him a prayer warrior, Father. Strengthen him, God, this morning in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ronald, I want to say to you and your wife, man, God, you guys are going to do a great work, man. All right? He's going to do a great work. He's going to do a quick work, all right? And in your family, all right? He's going to bring families, all right? And say within your own marriage, you know, that's going to blossom and you're going to, you're going to get couples to come, man. All right? As you focus in on this, all right? As you begin to, you know, uh, you know work at your first ministry, all right? And God, God's going to help you, all right? People are going to come in broken. They're going to think, what I want that, all right? And as you begin to model that, and that's all you really need to do, bro. Just go out there, model what it is to, to be a husband, to be a father, right? To be a disciple, right? Likewise, as a mother and, and uh, you know, a wife. As you just do that, people will come, man, right? And all these other things will come, man, but uh, in time. But listen, that, that's, I want to encourage you that as you, as you focus in on that, lo love each other, right? It's the first and main priority. Listen, have fun, right? That's all you need to do, bro. Have fun. It's like a roller coaster, right, man? <laughs> right? And uh, God's going to help her, help you. Amen. I mean, let's pray, church. Father, I thank you for my brother and sister, God. I pray that you'll go before them. God, I pray that you would give them, Father, couples, Lord. God, a quick work, God. God, in that place of labor, give him eyes to see, God, ears to hear. God, I pray, Father, the heart of his wife. God, I pray, bless this marriage. Help them strengthen their ministry. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Let's, let's praise God. Thank you again. I uh, do appreciate that. Um, amen. Uh, I hope you like the Aussie, Aussie guys. We don't often come. We live uh, upside down, you know. Uh, uh, we're down under. But uh, I do appreciate every single person here. I do appreciate uh, your pastor. He's not here, but uh, Pastor Lamb, I love you. Uh, he's uh, one of my favorite preachers, and uh, you, you're blessed here in this church. Amen. Let's give God praise as pastor comes. Praise God. Tremendous time. Thank God. Don't miss tonight. You want to come back? We have uh, Pastor Riccardi. We'll be ministering the gospel from, uh, all the way from Australia as well. And so bring people out, get the word out, and let's pack the building out once again on a Sunday night. And uh, we're going to dismiss in a word of prayer. And uh, I'll just remind you, if you would like a list of all the churches planted, uh, if you didn't catch the uh, screen real fast, <laughs> there is a list in the foyer uh, printed on paper. You can take those. You might want to pray for them. Or you can go online on the Prescott website and find it. We want to make that available to you, though. We're going to dismiss in prayer. And bow in our hearts, and I'm going to ask Keith if he'd lift his voice and ask God to bless us as we go this morning.